All right. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for the positive reception on the first video. And really, with that being the case, uh, I'm going to make more. So a movement that I want to do, I should have done rather on the first video, because it is one of the simpler inputs that you can do, not actually that complicated, I think, is a tiger knee. I've never actually done one of these. So let's see. Wait one second. Is it kick or jump? Short roundhouse any K if you are at a jumpable state. There we go. I feel decently good about that. I feel decently good about leaving it there. Can I do it like every single time? No. Have I done it four times? Yes. Do I more or less get the idea? Yes. You have to do like most of the move and then you have to jump and then as you're leaving the ground, you have to input the button for the move. It's just actually getting the timing so to where like you don't do like a ground move and you don't do an air kick is actually pretty difficult. So. Oh, OK. Hey, OK. All right. We're good here. Moving on. And then just before we leave here, uh, there is another TK that we can apparently do. Hell yeah. Okay, there we go. TKs are interesting. Um, they have more or less disappeared. I I would have to sort of double check this, but I think I'm okay saying this off the cuff. But Sagat in recent games, in recent years, doesn't actually have Tiger Knee anymore. Like this is an input that is only in old games at this point, which is a little bit unfortunate because it's more or less like pretty cool. Like I, I dig it. Like it, the uh, the theory behind it makes sense. I think that the only reason why I'm having a hard time inputting it here is because of general Super Turbo. It's very precise about what it wants. Okay, so another one that I missed from uh, from Tekken 7, actually, that very much makes sense to try and do. There's probably a lot of stuff in Tekken 7 that I can do, but let's like to like the popular stuff, at least for now. Oh no. Okay, one second. I forgot. Lucky, I love. I like Lucky Chloe. I forgot that she is not going to shut up the entire time that you have her in practice mode. One second. <laughs> All right, taunt jet upper. Kind of a legendary uh, motion. Although I will say I don't know too much about this one going in. I know that it's hard and very like frame perfect, but I don't know like what is hard about it. If it's the same thing as uh, Electric Wind Godfist, where it's just like a just frame kind of thing. I forgot to say last video that uh, Electric Wind Godfist is frame perfect. You have to land on the uh, last down forward and the button at the exact same frame, which is actually extremely hard, like extremely, extremely hard to get it like absolutely like frame perfect for your buttons to line up. Taunt, all right, three buttons. Did they not actually have it labeled what Jet Upper actually is? Okay. It is exactly still that. Hmm. I think that was it right there. Ryan, cooperate. Why, why is his taunt actually so hard to pull off? 
like in and of itself. I can imagine that the hard thing about this is that it isn't even just uh, pulling off the motion. Implementing this in combat has got to be hell, which is why it's probably so legendary as a hard motion. My hand is cramping up. <laughs> it really, really does not like the way that I'm trying to bunch my fingers on the bottom three buttons. So, uh... We're, we're gonna leave it there. Very extremely hard input. I get it. I get it immediately. All right. Let's give this one a shot. Um, I am semi unsure if I should be making this, but. All right, let's go over. Um, the Korean backdash. Famous Tekken input, completely like the core of Tekken in some players' opinions. Absolutely what you're going to see being done constantly in high-level play. So, Korean backdash. A normal backdash looks like that. Back, back. Not going back very fast, though. Korean backdash. Back. Down, back. Back. Neutral. Back. Down, back. Back. Neutral. That's the pattern for a Korean backdash. There's a couple of ways of pulling this off. And then we are doing a faster Korean backdash. I am having uh, hiccups there though. So let me see if I can get it as smooth as possible. And then, like, so... There is wave dashing with Kazuya as well. I think possibly the Mishimas. But I'm not sure that I'm supposed to be doing it this way. I am not sure. I don't think that's actually how you do it. This is a way of dashing in, but it's not how you're supposed to be doing it. So I'm going to assume that I am doing wave dashing wrong. A Korean backdash, I think I'm doing it right. My one problem that I have with it is that I don't know why I see people doing it faster than me, and I'm not able to, to match that. Because if I speed up my speed, then I just kind of, like, don't get the proper actual backdash out of it. But every time he steps off the water like that, that is what I believe is a proper uh, wave dash. You can probably look up the other tutorials on how to do this on stick list. This was never meant to be a tutorial series, by the way. I should probably like mention that. Like this, this is a fear that I'm having as I go through this is that none of this is meant to be like a tutorial for how to do this. This is just meant to be like, hey, watch me try and figure out how to do this stuff live. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I'm gonna need to hear from Tekken peeps how good I'm doing it, how to speed it up properly without breaking the rhythm. But there's the Korean backdash for you. This is actually, in my opinion, one of the harder inputs that you can possibly learn. It's why it's this deep in the video series. I've been trying to learn this motion for a while now. And I never really feel like I have like a solid grasp on it. I never feel like I've mastered it. So you're just going to have to be okay with just seeing a Korean backdash pulled off at all. Um, Tekken peeps, let me know how this was. That what I could do better, I guess. All right, back with some plus R fun. So somebody on the last video actually uh, requested that I check out Dizzy's instant kill. So we're gonna look that up and we're gonna see how that goes. Interesting. So it's sort of like Guile's super. Super turbo super. E, H, S, up, left, right, down. I need to look up if I need to go into insta-kill. 
I might be getting fucked up by Xard here. Okay, it doesn't require an IK at least. And then how do you taunt? I fucking hate plus R for this reason, because I'm going into the command list and it doesn't actually tell you like actually how to set up every command. This drive is so much better, yo. I'm just gonna start fights in the comments immediately. <laughs> That's a hell of a super jump. Holy shit. Oh my god. Um. I am losing my fucking mind. Holy shit. Basically, kind of. I don't know. I can't do it every time, but I'm doing it consistently enough right now to be happy with it. Um, that's an annoying input. <laughs> that's a really, really annoying input. I think it makes sense on Fight Stick because it's basically just a diamond. But on Stickless, this sucks. Like, I have to put my hands into a very strange configuration. Half using my left hand and half using my right hand. And the charge time is really strange. Um, this move sucks, apparently. Like, everywhere that I'm reading, like, everybody's like, oh my god, this move sucks so much. It's so telegraphed, and nobody will ever fall into it. Terrible move. Terrible input. Cool animation. I like Dizzy as a character. Um, this left a very poor impression on me. So, thank you for the suggestion, and I definitely did it, but oh my god, this took, like, an hour or two to get this down. <laughs> <laughs>